So bonjour tout le monde. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for all being here. As uh, Lisa said, my name is Sam. And today I'll give you a little flavor of my research and talk to you guys about uh, stress and adolescence. So two things we've all been through at some point in our life. Um, and as she said, um, the title of my presentation today is The Vulnerability to Enduring Effects of Adolescent Social Stress is Sex Dependent. And so scientifically, we view adolescence as a really diffuse uh, and broad period of time. Um, it's defined as the gradual transition from a juvenile state to independence. And as you can imagine, during this adolescence period, there's many different transitions going on. Um, physically, we are going through many changes hormonally and also behaviorally. And these things make it such that we mature uh, into an adult. Now, the reason that neuroscientists uh, were so concerned with this population is due to the fact that um, adolescents have uh, an increased vulnerability to developing mental illnesses. And as we see in this study, um, the age of onset for many different psychopathologies is during adolescence. And so the question is, well, why do adolescents have this increased vulnerability to develop these psychopathologies? And uh, there is consensus in the scientific community that uh, this enhanced vulnerability is in part because the adolescent prefrontal cortex, so this brain region over here, is still developing. And just like our beautiful city of Montreal, the PFC is under constant construction in adolescence and is really one of the last brain regions to fully mature. Um, in particular, uh, dopamine axons in the mesocortical pathway, they're still growing. And the density of dopamine fibers in the PFC continues to increase all the way until uh, early adulthood. And so we know that several psychiatric disorders of adolescent onset, they're characterized by impulse control deficits. So it's really interesting that these disorders, they all have this common symptom of, of increased impulsivity. And we know that increased impulsivity is mediated directly by dopamine function in the PFC. So really no wonder that dopamine in the PFC and impulse control, they mature in parallel during adolescence. This really makes a lot of sense. And we know that the PFC in adolescence is very vulnerable to experiences. And I'm really interested in one of the most important experiences during adolescence which is socializing with peers. And during adolescence, we start exploring more, socializing, and we're thus more exposed to social stress. Um, experiencing social stress in early adolescence, such as bullying, is really associated with uh, depressive symptoms and psychopathology later on in adulthood. And very importantly, young male and females, they're differently affected by social stress. Uh, this human study conducted under the Canadian government really demonstrated that um, there's an age-specific prevalence of mood and anxiety disorders. And it shows that young Canadian females, they're more at risk of developing these mood and these anxiety disorders. So our lab uh, really adapted a mouse model to reproduce these aspects of social victimization that we see in ad adolescent humans. And this model is called the accelerated social defeat and can be used both for female and male adolescent mice. Um, and the first thing we do is this priming phase where we introduce um, an adult C57 black six uh, to a CD1 retired breeder. This is a male and the CD1 is really gets riled up and primed for aggressiveness. So we take out the adult then we introduce our experimental male or female adolescent mouse in the home cage of the CD1. And the larger aggressive mouse will attack the experimental intruder for 10 attacks or for 10 minutes. And this is referred to obviously as physical stress. Following that, these attacks, uh, the experimental mouse is placed on the other side of a perforated divider neighboring the CD1 aggressor that has just attacked them. And this is referred to as sensory stress. 
And these two mice will be neighbors for 12 hours, after which the experimental mouse, again, will be exposed to a new CD1. And so these will have two sessions of physical stress per day for a total of four days. Then on the fifth day, we run this really cool social interaction test that'll measure social avoidance, uh, one of our measures we wanna see. And so this test really compromises two phases. And in the first phase, the experimental mouse that underwent uh, the four days of, uh, of stress is introduced into this big arena. And this arena is really divided into different zones. So you have the social interaction zone. And then down here, you have these two corner zones. And in the first phase, uh, we put an empty enclosure up here in the social interaction zone, and there's no CD1 present as the black six mouse is exploring the arena. And then after three minutes, we take out the mouse. Uh, for the second phase, we put a CD1 in this interact in the in the interaction zone, and he's in an enclosure. So we put the experimental mouse again back in to explore the arena. However, as I said, this time we do have the, the CD1 here in the enclosure. And um, then we calculate the social interaction ratio based on the time. Uh, the experimental mouse spent uh, in the interaction zone um, in the second phase with the CD1 present over the amount of time they spent in the interaction zone with the CD1 absent in the first phase. And if they spend more time in the interaction zone when the CD1 is present, the ratio will be more than one, and we call them resilient. If they spend less time in the social interaction zone when the CD1 is present, the ratio will be less than one, and we call them susceptible. So I've shown you that the adolescent PFC is very vulnerable during adolescence since it's still developing. So I came to a Flores lab, and I wanted to address a very important question. I wanted to address what are the short-term and the long-term effects of social defeat stress during adolescence and secondly, I want to address how this differs between males and females, which is frustratingly a much understudied topic still today. And in terms of short-term responses to stress, interestingly, when male and female adolescents undergo this defeat, uh, we find very different proportions of res these resilient and susceptible mice. For female adolescent mice, we have this stark increase in uh, resiliency compared to the males, which is almost like half of them, more than half of them. Um, and only a minority, this little 12% are susceptible compared to 45, which is really astonishing to me. Um, in terms of long-term impacts, we asked whether accelerated social defeat during adolescence really impacted impulse control later in adulthood and how this affected males and females differently. So to measure this, we performed the go-no-go no go task on mice. Um, this task measures behavioral inhibition, which is a PFC-dependent behavior. Um, note that it's routinely used in humans uh, to assess cognitive control as well. And so what I did was I performed the accelerated social defeat paradigm and then I waited until adulthood, postnatal day 75, to perform the go-no-go no go task. And this is looking at how stress in adolescence may have long-term cognitive impacts in adulthood. And so this task consists of two different types of trials, a go trial and a no-go trial. In the go trial, there's a light cue that goes on over here, indicating to the mouse he must nose poke. And then if the mouse does it, he gets a reward uh, if, it, if it does it on, in time. In the no-go trial, the light cue comes on, but is paired with the tone. So in this case, the mouse has to refrain from poking. Now, the mice can make an error. Um, during the no-go cue, when the light and the tone are paired together, if the mouse does not refrain itself from nose poking, it doesn't get a reward. And that's marked as a commission error. So we'll see over here, the light and the tone. And so he still went for it. So 
Commission errors measure the ability to behaviorally inhibit your response. And remember, that's a PFC dependent behavior. So when we look at commission errors in male adolescents, we see that control, they decrease their commission errors over time, since throughout the task, they learn to inhibit their behavior and refrain themselves from nose poking. This is a learned task, it takes a couple days and then they start decreasing as you see here. However, male adolescents that have undergone stress, they do not improve uh, their behavior as well in comparison to these controls. So overall, stress in adolescents for male mice leads to impulse control deficits in adulthood, regardless of resiliency or susceptibility. But what about females? And so we, we see that like in males, the controls, they get better at the go-no-go -no -go task over time. Um, and the resilient mice, just as in males, uh, they maintain a significantly higher proportion of these commission errors in comparison to controls. So just like the males. Now in the males, um, we were also expecting, you see here the susceptibles uh, maintain a higher proportion. So we were expecting the same in females. However, the susceptible mice actually get better at the task across time in the same way that the controls do. So we conclude that only the resilient mice really show this deficit in impulse control. So to summarize, one, I've showed you that the adolescent PFC is very vulnerable during adolescence since it's still developing. Secondly, I've shown you that if we perform social defeat during adolescence, there are short-term and long-term consequences that differ in males and females. For adolescent male mice that undergo social defeat, there's almost an equal proportion of resilient and susceptible mice. And these stress mice show deficits in impulse control later on in adulthood, regardless of their social avoidance pattern immediately after adolescent stress. Adolescent females that undergo social defeat show much higher proportions of resilient mice. And although resilient females um, may be able to protect themselves against the imminent social avoidance caused by social defeat, they're ultimately still susceptible to long-term deficits on cognition and on decision-making skills. Um, there are also many other long-term effects that differ between males and females, such as body weight. Uh, we found that males exposed to social stress, they do not have significant changes, whereas adolescent females that underwent stress show uh, increases later on in adulthood. So really to consolidate all this, I hope you will take away two important key points. Firstly, it's clear that vulnerability to enduring effects of adolescent social stress is very much sex dependent. And secondly, I think we need to start being more careful how we describe vulnerability. Um, as female data has shown us, uh, using the terms resilience and susceptibility may not be appropriate or at least need to be used with caution in both my studies but also um, I and many others would argue the same applies with human vulnerability. So every time I write up or give a talk uh, about resilience and susceptibility, I put these quotation marks because clearly the term is misleading uh, and not giving us the whole picture of what's going on. Lastly, I'd like to thank the entire Flores Lab for all the support I got. Uh, they've helped me grow and become uh, the scientist I am today. And also thank you guys all for listening to my presentation and I'll gladly turn the floor to any of your questions.